Banana me banana. Step right up and get your banana radiation doses. Are you scared of bananas? You should be. According to all the fear mongers out there that bananas will irradiate you just like Fukushima. So hi Diver Dude and Basic Data and Red Button Studio, Albert, Fukushima Revelations, Penny Miller, Broken Ass Islander, Amthurst, Sydney, Kevin, Penny again, DC, Brian, Lunar, I'm burping as I'm talking, the Stephen B Show, James, we got Char, Wannabe, Toxic, JD Mason, Ricky Sticky, can't believe the time went that fast, I was trying to get ready, and you notice I switched the name of the video, the title of the video tonight, Thank All right, looking good. Only took me a minute and 10 seconds. This is a live stream. If anybody's not familiar, you can catch the streams most night. Uh, 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we're a good crew, a happy crew. I kind of snap sometimes. Usually I'm pretty lucid. I always start off the shows by saying hello to people. Uh, because I read their comments and I've come to know them and their family as far as I'm concerned. Hi Craig, Tyro, The Limp, Zigfree, Toxic, Query, Larry and I almost got it that time. Albert, Miss Frill, Mickey, you ate too many bananas today, Mickey. We gotta get you an enema. We gotta get you an enema before it's too late, man. You eat too much bananas. It's gonna get you. Fucking bananas. Sorry, folks. Fucking bananas are gonna get you. Dora, dude, Lori. Uh, I'm not gonna get everybody. Good try, though. Uh, let me see what we're up to. So we got a really, really, really wild article down below. There's a physicist. And his name is, I gotta go look it up, <laughs> Dr. Kevin Kim, double M's, K E M M. And he's the CEO of Nuclear Africa and also a lawyer heaping bag of nonsense. And has a nuclear project management company based in Petora, South Africa. And I put a link below to his article. <laughs> There was no Fukushima nuclear disaster. So shut the fuck up. He says, to a nuclear physicist like me, I look up on some public reactions with half amusement and half with dismay. Firstly, let us get something clear. There was no Fukushima nuclear disaster. That's what he says. Total number of people killed by nuclear radiation at Fukushima was zero. Is that right? Well, I'm sorry, but I gotta disagree with you, buddy. Total injuries by radiation, zero. There's 5,000 Fukushima employees had 10,000 counts inside their body at Fukushima's hospital. In the first month. 5,000 employees. I guess that's okay in his books. <laughs> it's better getting it on your skin, Dana boy. If you ingest it. You poop it out later. Like 30, 40 years along with the tumor. They'll get it out when they get the tumor out of you. <laughs> what the hell is going through his mind? Now he wrote this article 2013. And that's what got under my skin. 2013, October the 12th. So is there a possibility he never had an opportunity to be aware of what happened to Fukushima? Did he just rush out with that story? Or is he just some mouthpiece who knows better and is out there lying? Yeah, you guessed it. He's a mouthpiece and he's out there lying. And that's a brutal lie, okay? That's an outright outrageous lie. 
that let me come back to that article there right, there's a link below it feels like i got a touch of the flu the total number of people killed by neuter neuter radiation nuclear radiation at fukushima zero that's what he says in that article total injured by radiation zero there's a million beckwolds in a playground at a local school 20 kilometers away after decontamination and so he's, he's saying radiation doesn't hurt kids, I think, is what he's trying to say in that article. There is no nuclear disaster, he says. Dr. Kevin Kim. Right? And people wonder why no one wants to trust a nuclear scientist or a nuclear physicist. By making statements like that in writing. By putting it up in an article. And putting your name on it. And the name of your company. I got a nuclear company, so I'm always friggin' right. That's his friggin' attitude. What the hell, man? They're gonna put a tire around you, set it on fire, and watch you die, boy. You're in Africa. You don't want to go pissing off the people down there, buddy. Tell you what, this sorts you very quick. Like, uh, go read uh, News 24, South Africa, and go over to the crime section. And then go over to South Africa or West Africa and read the crime reports each day. You'll never watch a horror show again. You'll go back there and read that site. I can't even go into it, what, how bad it is. I really can't. I just don't want to. Because it's, it's over the top. And it's, it's so sad, you know, that country has been destroyed and that these people have no education that they have no hope and that they have been deceived and attacked so many times there's nothing left over there there is no hope it's horrible what happens to the kids over there it's unimaginable it's unimaginable i don't think there's a girl over there who don't get raped by the time she's five or ten years of age a lot of people over there think she can cure aids if you have sex with a virgin That's a fact. To the point where puppy was dropped off. I shouldn't even say this one, I suppose. But a puppy was dropped off at the dog pound. And it had a condom hanging out of it. A puppy. And this is somebody trying to... right? Because like one in four of the people down there have AIDS. And think about Africa. <clears throat> and think about Bayer's aspirin. Where they recall the four or five million liquid aspirins. That had the AIDS virus in it, and what they done with it? Instead of destroying it, they don't even. Have, don't, I'm not even going to go down the path, but they shipped it down to Asia and they shipped it to poor countries, and something like that could have been done in Africa. That would explain why one in every four a decade ago had AIDS. I mean, the population doesn't have sex anymore in North America, and so how come one in every four in North America don't have AIDS or worse? Because there's a lot of botchery in North America. Uh, let me come back to Kevin Kemp. They're like, it's really bad what they've done to those people, folks. And what they're continuing to do to those people. It has the second biggest aquifer, uh, Lake Victoria. The second biggest underground, underwater aquifer is under Lake Victoria. as another aquifer. It's bigger than uh, every other one on the planet except for the, the biggest one on, t on the planet, which is... Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. For underground aquifer. Oh, yeah. It's uh, Paraguay, I think it is. And George Bush bought like a thousand acres down there a few years back for next to nothing. And underneath his property is the biggest aquifer in that country. I'm digressing. I've got to watch out because I can go way down these roads if I'm not careful. <clears throat> he said there was no uh, Dr. Kevin Kemp. And there's a link below to his physicists there was no fukushima nuclear disaster i could see him go down to japan and give a lecture about that all over the place it's reprehensible that somebody like that would say something like that what kind of cold demented person would say something like that what kind of evil creepy friggin how come he still got a degree what university did he go to why is he allowed to do that without the academic community not coming up and telling him to shut up? 
right? How come we're not even hearing from any nuclear scientists anyway? And when you read these figures, how can you ever trust a nuclear scientist or a physicist or, or owners, which are all private corporations because the corporation, the insurance companies won't touch them. And then they steal money out of your pocket all the time for nuclear waste, which they turn into uranium-238 and they fire into Africa and Iraq and Afghanistan at the rates of two and a half million rounds a month for nine years during the Iraq-Afghanistan war. It's not just here at all, right? It's used everywhere else on this friggin' planet. It's thrown into the ocean all the time. But for a doctor, a practicing doctor who has a business based upon nuclear energy to come out and tell us that there's nothing wrong with Japan, that nobody in Japan got sick, is friggin' over the top. That's over the top. It's the stupidest thing imaginable. It's the most stupidest, heartless, cold fucking thing you can imagine. Let me go down to some of these headlines. That just pissed me off. That pisses me off. That someone can even think like that. Well, for starters, let me hit some numbers for you, Doc. Uh, yeah, yeah. And my computer loves me. Over 4 million becquels per square meter in a major city, just around Fukushima itself. So nobody's going to get sick in that, right, Doc? Right? 4 million becquels per square meter is okay, right? That's friggin' cool. It's like bananas. Right, Doc? Dr. Kevin Kim? How did you get a degree, man? Why are you so friggin' dark? Why are you so friggin' dark, boy? You're just a boy. You're just a child. You're a very hurtful person, though. Saying lies like that hurts people, murders people. Doesn't give people an opportunity to understand something. They turn to a doctor because he's supposed to tell you the truth. At least some of it. It's okay if he mixes in a few lies because that's all they really do anyway. That's why no one can stand nuclear scientists. I'd rather have Charles Manson alongside of me than a nuclear scientist any day. I really would. Charles was a coward anyway. He got everybody else to do his work. Just like Doc. Tokyo. Let me see. Strontium-90 found 245 kilometers from meltdown. Don't worry, Dana. Strontium found in 2,200 locations in Fukushima. No fucking worry, Dana. Can't hurt you. Well, the reality of it is that 10, uh, 50 becquels a kilogram leads to irreversible lesions in uh, vital organs. What the hell is 20 million becquels per square meter going to do to you and do to those children? Doc, they're closer to the ground, Doc. Wait, there's nothing wrong down there. How dare you? How dare you sell those people out? How dare you, you coward? You anti-human fucking coward. And then he says, no problem with the water off the beach. Radioactive iodine is 7.5 million times legal limit in the water around Fukushima. Cesium-137 is 1.1 million times. Cesium attacks the heart right away, Doc. You're a friggin' doctor. You're an outrageous lawyer. You're an embarrassment to everything on this planet. To every fucking human on this planet. You're an embarrassment, man. You're a humiliation to your loved ones and your family who put their fate into you and to your parents. They must hang their head in fucking shame knowing they breathed something like you, something so fucking dark as you that can come out and say shit like that. Like it drives me over the top. People inhaled 85,000 becquels of radioactivity in just four hours. We're not talking about potassium. 40, you fucker. I'll pop back up there in a second. Am I up there yet? 
I'm watching the comments section. I'm going to have to refresh that page to see if I friggin' show up. I had to knock me off my fucking roll, pricks. Am I back yet? I can't tell if I'm back yet. Am I back yet? I get kicked off big time. Don't stick it to the man. Even grab Dana. <laughs> Somebody grabbed me. I'm not back yet or what? I'm what? Am I here or what? Back. That was weird. Hello, everyone. Hey, 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 hey. I'm back. Big storm blowing here. You're back. No, I got knocked off. Both of my computers got off. Well, I'm going to have to... I was just about to give up on Dr. Kevin Kemp. Now I'm just going to finish the entire friggin' show on his ass. And every friggin' night I'm going to do Kevin Kemp as soon as I start the fucking video off. Here, I got, an, I got a question for Kevin Kemp, Dr. Kevin Kemp. If I take a walk in a bathtub of water rich in insignificant potassium 40 on a plane of 50,000 feet, eating a fucking banana with rocks in my cheek like a squirrel of natural uranium, will I get cancer, Doc? Huh? Huh? Is that worse than Fukushima, Doc? I bet you you'll say, yes, it is. Dana, it's really bad. The rocks will hurt your teeth. Now I'm going to lose my power here. What the fuck, over? I didn't lose my single here on my computers. Not, neither one of my computers went beep. And now my lights just flash. It was the ghost of Kevin's grandfather saying, Give it to him, Dana. He was a little bastard. Used to steal money out of my pocket when I was in the shower, a frigger. That's what that was. That was the ghost of Kevin, Dr. Kevin Kemp's grandfather. Uh, when was the last time I got kicked off like that? Never. So, he'll write an article tomorrow. Oh, it happens all the time. Conspiracy theory balling about getting kicked off the internet. He won't mention anything about nuclear power. You already make an article. He had one ear that was bigger than the other. It was horrible. Yeah, that fucking drives me friggin' crazy. How can I, uh... He says, people who are afraid of heights are made to bungee jump off a bridge. And the people who are scared of spiders or insects are made to get a bat full of spiders. Let's put Dr. Kevin Kemp Right off the beach of Fukushima, where there's seven point something million becquels per square meter of cesium and iodine. And let him get there, take his kids down. We'll check back in in a couple of years and see how those tumors are doing. Friggin' dickhead. Let me see what else he got here now. To a nuclear physicist like me, I look upon the public reaction half with amusement and half with dismay. Ah, the freaking population, boy, you know, they're, they're whining about poor Japanese internet censorship because the Japanese are scared and the government got to bait them down. You know, Tokyo, the government was going to move Tokyo's headquarters another couple of hundred miles west. Doc. Dr. Kevin fucking dipshit. Coward. You friggin' traitor, man. And the risk from internal exposure is two to six hundred times or even up to a billion times depending on who you're talking to. Here's another headline. Cesium in the sea is likely to return to Japan in 20 or 30 years. Take about Ken Busler where he says it gets 1,500 miles out to sea and it turns to potassium fucking 40. Ha ha ha. He's not even a nuclear scientist. IAEA today admitted there's no such thing as safe levels of radiation. Doctor, my son. You know, there's 2,200 spots in Fukushima shown strontium-90. The entire country, right from one end, right to the friggin' other. 
Seven people died in this particular shopping street. That was in Fukushima itself. Uh, September 18, 2012. Doc, seven fucking people on one street. And the numbers on that street are frightening. Uh, hang on here. 81 microceivers per hour, 60 kilometers outside. 800 times acceptable. That was another story. Another um, study. Let me see if I can find it. Because I don't talk about it enough. Hang on. Come on, Mr. Computer. Come on, banana. There we go. I done 133. Come on. Yep, I got it. Oh, you so eh? Oh, my goodness. Listen to you. Wow. Probably breeding in some of that iodine 133 when you're, you're sniffing this morning. That's, that's probably gone by now. Of course, it's got a very short half-life. Time's 10. So if it's two days, it's 20 days. It only takes a couple of days for it to show up here in the jet streams. He probably never even heard tell of jet streams. Former top Japanese nuclear official appalled by his new findings. Iodine-133, likely a major contributor to thyroid doses after Fukushima. Much bigger health concern than Iodine-131. Much bigger. So it's these types of stings. You had uh, Xenon-133 detected two days ago in Washington State. Right? Isotopes of California. There was 1,500 uh, radioactive atoms per cubic meter of air in California in March, April. People were breathing in 10 hot particles in Seattle. March and April, a day. Shocking, the truth. The truth is shocking. And Dr. Kevin Kemp, who's someone you're supposed to be able to look up to, somebody you're supposed to be able to trust, somebody that's got a degree, for some reason, is able to hang on to it, and has got a company that is in the nuclear industry. That's freaking frightening. That if he can't find this information yet, he's working. He's some of the people that are... No wonder they're dumping so much uranium-238 into the ocean. Barrels and barrels and barrels. That's probably what he does. He's probably got a company that takes that shit and buries it in people's communities. That's literally what we're talking about. Let me go look at him again. you got to watch me, because once he starts going, I'll snap on that tonight. Over 30,000 Beckwells a square meter, 250 kilometers from the countdown, Nagato, September 28, 2011. Kemp, Dr. Kemp, I don't know if I should call you doctor anymore. Contamination map shows cesium-137, 900 kilometers from Fukushima. It's not just here. It went five miles up in the air. Another study from Japan's university is nine miles up in the air, Doc. You don't suppose they got in the jet streams right above it? Huh? Huh? Do you, Doc? Do it? Do it? Huh? Do you, Doc? You fucker? Bag of shit? Ah! Hey, war cry! Ah! <laughs> Results show contamination has spread all over the country. All over the country. And you got the balls, you got the arrogance to write an article saying, and he even puts his name there, physicist. There was no Fukushima nuclear disaster. You retarded friggin' idiot. You bore, how do you even tell your own fucking shows? How do you do it? I know I snap sometimes. I apologize. Sometimes I forget I'm streaming. I really do. I'm reading this shit. I'm like that when I'm not streaming. I'm sitting here reading. <laughs> That's how I am. That's why my friends probably love me so much. Is because I'm just entertaining. I'll be sitting there. Everybody's talking. I'll start screaming. The fuck is wrong with you? Ah! Anyway. Yesterday there was a matchstick on the football field. Today there's two matchsticks on the football field. Matchsticks pollution has increased by a massive hundred percent in 24 hours. Oh, 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 fucking, oh. I'm going to get you in the headlock. i give you the good old hockey. Give you that good old Canadian uppercut, motherfucker. Fuck you. I got your name, man. I'm going to be telling everybody about you forever. I'll be like the little kingfisher on the coastline. 
when I'm approaching the coastline. He flies out and he goes along the coast like, ah! Creatures are here. The humans, those fucking humans are back. It's like that too. There's uh, 26,000 islands up here. And as a commercial diver, I can only hit the bottom for six hours a day. So you go hiking on different islands every day. And all of these islands are golden beaches. Canada was fascinating, you know, in the history books. They used to have wonderful islands up there you can actually go visit. Now it has uh, dead bodies from Fukushima and ships and boats that washed over from the tsunami. Remember, the ocean current travels from two to nine kilometers an hour. Think about that. If it's traveling at one mile an hour is my estimate, that's 229 days, 27 days, it reaches British Columbia, Canada. The ocean runs faster than that. Tens of thousands of miles is picking up this stuff that's hemorrhaging out of the plant every day. Remember, they had detonations as the tsunami was coming back, full of all that debris, 2,000 miles of debris out there. And so a lot of these rods, 122,000 rods, 12 foot each, 80 in a bundle is the number I use, but it could be 60 in a bundle. Who gives a fuck? Who really truly do about a, a couple of hundred bundles? When just a single bundle is more than enough to kill all life on the planet. A single rod is enough to kill all life on the planet. It's irradiated. It went through the chain reaction. And I just spent 28 minutes that time screaming. I see I got cannibalized last night in my numbers. Uh, amazing that overnight, now the night is even lower, which is no big surprise for a Saturday night. But to see that what they've done to my video, three videos back, uh, the only time in all this time that I got less than 400, utter censorship of what they're doing to me. You can't. You know, well, there's no one else out there, right? Who the hell, who else, who else are they going to practice on if they're not going to practice on us, right? They're evil, and so they don't care. They just need a victim, and we're active, and so we make good victims. We're good targets. We're easy targets, right? We're, but they can put us on a list, and then everybody can use us for targets. That's literally what they're doing to keep a paycheck. I mean, there's people out there right now watching everything we're doing, recording everything we're doing in the hopes that in the future they might be able to use it against us to silence us or or they can use it now and put us into algorithms and try to censor us they've certainly been doing with me for quite a while uh, like i said he got rid of 3600 of my subscribers in a couple of goes and five million of my views in a couple of goes in the same period that's unprecedented these were the people that commented these were the people that watched my videos these were the people that I watched your videos. And if anybody knows anything about me, there's a couple of thousand artists on my front page, and I know all of them. I converse with all of them. Because they're all good people. There might be one or five that I didn't get a chance to, to, to have chat with, to literally have chats with. And I feature their music on my site because I think they're extraordinary people. But that don't mean I just went and found one artist. I went and list the hundreds. And I said, okay, they got good vocals. I might not like their music, but they're really good. They're very talented. What the hell was that? Well, it's always not lit up, so I'm not going to worry about it. That was weird. That was Dr. Kevin Kemp's grandfather, probably, the gushing away. Thank you, Dan. That was a good beating. He's lucky I don't get him to my sight really good. I start looking him up and seeing what else he's saying. I probably got enough ammunition there for the next 10 years, but looks at that. How can anybody come out and say shit like that? How can he get away with that? How come the academic can never call out people like that? Can never correct people like that? And so they just keep doing it. There's money, huge money, but that's evil. That is evil to say that. How, how can you even consider being like that, Doc? Let me get rid of that. I'm brain dead. Sometimes I snap. 
Oh, I'm off track now. Let me come down and say hi to a few people. Get back on track. Hi, Stephen. Glucinite.nodes.org. Stephen's got a suggestion here for people. And he's got a link for everybody. The name assigned to the targets is Don't Hesitate. Yeah. Hi, Thomas. Thomas Grokenberger. I'm Scott that toy, probably. And he's an amazing artist, folks. You really should check him out. He's, he's got amazing vocals. And I know people with vocals. And Thomas, is a, he's a well above anything average you're going to see out there. He's a, he's a very accomplished musician. Let's put it that way. I don't, want to, I don't want to break him up too much and have him blushing on us. But he's an extraordinarily talented individual. And if you collect music, there's, that's a good thing to have in your collection because it's, real, it's the real deal, okay? You have to work your whole life to be that talented, folks. And like I said, i got a couple thousand artists on my site. I think he's number two. Janine, um, I, I have a problem with names. The number one there I got, uh, the most recent one that I favored, you'll see. She's really talented. Uh, amazing talent out there. A lot of people apologize. You don't have the best equipment. They don't have the best lighting. I don't even care if it's a really bad recording, right? The fact that you put it out there, we get a chance to hear it and judge for ourselves. And it has to pass a criteria to get in my favor. They have to have something unique about them, right? That you know that if they, no matter what they put out, it's worth looking at, it's worth listening to because it, uh, it's a treasure, it's something personal. And I can't say that enough about original music because original music has no memory for you. You can assign your own memories. Right now, all the music out there has memories assigned to it that you don't even realize through commercials, through elevators, through advertisements and car radios, product placements in movies. And there's memories attached to that. That's why it's used. There's associations there you can never escape. There's triggers there waiting to happen. Uh, probably shit you don't even want to remember. But original music, there was my data again. My back yet or what? Yeah, that was a short one. Wait, I'll wait for this computer to pop back up. Here we go. Back on line. Yeah, I kind of snapped when I was reading that article. Every time I look at the page during the headline here, it still makes me, like, it's just really. I'm going to assume I'm back up. It's hard to say, though, when I get kicked offline. Let me refresh, see what happens here. <clears throat> and it's one of those nights, it's not going to be a long stream. I don't feel it in me tonight. Uh, all day today, was up to the studio today having issues my scooter I still haven't been able to drive it and I don't know if a lot of people know much about me um, I got injured in a diving accident uh, 14 years ago commercial accident 128 days on the ocean and I woke up in a hyperbury chamber that's my memories anyway and that's where I started from and so since then, I studied at Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, MIT, Stanford, Oxford, that you've heard so many times from me. And that brought me back. I spent 10 years um, in a hospital bed, um, home care, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Beautiful Girl by Dana is named after the people that took care of me. I don't know if I told you folks lately about that. I like mentioning that sometimes. That's where the name Beautiful Girl by Dana comes from. And uh, they used to get me to play uh, certain songs for nostalgic purposes for them. And I would call up my family. And uh, that's how I regained everything, how I learned over, started from scratch. <clears throat> and I rebuilt uh, uh, parts of my life I didn't that they said I would never have back. It was a bad accident, 128 days on the ocean floor. And I don't know and I don't remember and I don't want to remember and I don't care. It's a long time forgotten for me sometimes. But since then, I, a lot have come back. You know, my life has gotten, and particularly in the last four years, uh, pushed myself for recovery. I can't do very much. Uh, I'm, an old, I'm an old man, much older than you can imagine. Um, the truth, the truth of it is that 
Uh, these injuries are degenerative injuries, right? So they arthritis and stuff like that. It's not something you can uh, you can fix. And so, you know, you, you that was a hard job I had. I ran a multi-million dollar operation for many many years. Teams of Navy SEALs. I've, I was the most privileged probably imaginable. And out of nine of us that started out way back in the day, uh, four are paraplegics, four are dead, and me. I, I, I was the one who got, who was lucky apparently, if you call it, if you call it that. I went through hell to get back to where I am. And I ran the big fleets in both sides of Canada, in the open ocean, extensively, yeah, because that was the way I was raised. I was raised, uh, once you start a job, you finish the job no matter what. Once you commit, you never turn your back. I was never fired from a job. I, I was a contractor, anyway, I ran, I ran the show or I didn't work. And you had to have a gold credit card to hire me. You had to give me a gold credit card or I didn't touch your operation. <clears throat> and I would spend 50,000 bucks on you. I wouldn't even blink an eye. I didn't care. I'm here to get a job done. Right? And there's hundreds of people depending upon me to do that job. And uh, my job was always to organize and implement, pay people, order everything, keep the float planes. I knew every mechanic, every engineer, every machine shop, in every community on the coastline of Canada, except for maybe 10. I knew every wharfinger. I knew almost every single island. I knew every port. I knew every camboy. I knew every safe harbor. I knew all the biggest shakers and movers out there. You can't even imagine. I can't probably even imagine. I ran some of the most astounding scenarios you can even imagine. That I'm not going to get into. Extraordinarily fortunate. And nothing has ever kept me down. Nothing has ever stopped me. Nothing has ever slowed me down. Nothing intimidates me. I respect it. But I'm not intimidated. I, I, even now, I'm still, I still, I can't be intimidated. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I wasn't raised to be like that. There's nobody in my family like that. And there's no reason to be like that if you're honest. Right? If you're. Because the truth has more power per cubic centimeter than a million square miles of lies and deceit and deception and misdirection. The single sentence of truth that you can fill this room up with bananas and the radiation couldn't possibly hurt you. Fill it up with radiation rods from Fukushima and this island is off limits. Well, a large chunk of it anyway. Till the end of time, but that'll spread. You have to get out pretty quick. Like a, just a piece of rods the size of a banana is equal to hundreds of billions of bananas. But it's different isotopes. You can't ingest isotopes through that. Right? Dr. Devin, Dr. Kevin Kemp, his idea is to, to lie, deceive, and he would probably murder somebody. Anybody who's capable of saying stuff like he says in that article in the links before, is it a hard stretch to imagine they would murder somebody or rape somebody? Is that a very hard stretch? Hardly. Is it a hard stretch to say that they have committed some serious crimes and that they're committing crimes, that they're going against the institutions where they got their degree, that they go against their hypocritic oath to science? That 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 that, that is unimaginably a bold face, outrageous, outrageous manipulation. It's not even a manipulation. It's, it's an outrageous lie to say that nothing in Fukushima is contaminated, that there was no nuclear reaction almost at the end of 2013. And I know I kind of digressed right in my own personal shit like I always do. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. There's not much you can do about it. <coughs> uh, about your life, only move on, right? You know, if I had half the opportunities that Dr. Kevin Kemp 
has as a doctor. Imagine if he wrote a book on the truth. Imagine if he was giving an interviews and telling the truth. Imagine how popular he would be. How much money he could he make and manipulate from that scenario from just being honest. Right? But what he said will follow him around till the end of time. He can never do it. He's discredited it. Right? So he has to live the lie till the end of time. He has to live that lie till the end of time. It's unimaginable that people like that are not called out are not called out. Well, let me say hi to everybody. We'll give it up for tonight. 43 minutes. Blah. Saturday night. I'm not going to be here tomorrow night. I'm going to finish the editing. And this mega video I'm putting out. So everybody can know what's going on. Everybody can have the whole story. That You know, some of these headlines I just read you earlier tonight. Before I went down to scream and match. Uh, or it will be in there. In context. I give you overwhelming information, accurate, pertinent information for each of the 17 genres I'm going to cover in about an hour and a half documentary. Or, you know, just the encompassment of Fukushima with the headlines, around 360 headlines, so that we can stop, right, the, the, the nonsense. So everybody understands what really happened. Without a doubt, right? You know, that's the whole point. You need that. You're so bad, you need that. And you don't probably know it yet. Maybe you do. But you need to understand the entire picture like I do. And the only way to me for you to do that is after six or seven days now uh, is to finish the project, right? Because it's very uh, consuming. I spent all day because I had to redo the audio all again. Brutal. So whatever comes at this time is coming out because I just can't do it no more. That's three times. It's just so much, right? And to categorize it and, and, and keep it in numbers and keep it all in the context and shift things around for dates. and My goodness, it would take me a year to do it properly. And I will down the road. It'll get better or easier. That's the whole plan. So Julie, thank you. Red Button Studio. Thank you, Mary. You're too kind. Aqua, John, Thomas, Tina, Rob, Terry, Albert, Quirty. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't have to go very far back in my videos to see my wheelchair, folks. Anyway, I got a serious cool wheelchair, and but that's why I want my scooter because my scooter does 30 kilometers an hour, and it's a $15,000 wheelchair. Uh, that I, I use all the time for farting around with. Uh, but the scooter is freedom. I can't, I get motion sickness in automobiles. I can't drive. I probably got about 80 hours in automobiles in the last uh, 14 years. Well, it's almost 15 years now. And just in case anybody's wondering about all of that was, I kept the same pair of shoes that I had before I got injured, a brand new pair uh, they were like 160 bucks. They were really nice sneakers with the yellow trim. It was really, and I had them for 10 years because I had walked in those. And the theory was that one day I would walk in the same pair of boots. And I kept it for 10 years. And every year I said I'd be back to work at the end of that year. And every year I tried my best. And it took me almost 10 years before I realized I was retired. Um, but in that period I was studying. I was rebuilding myself, re-educating myself. Reacclimating, acclimating myself to being on land because I spend my entire life on the ocean and trying to get back out there. <laughs> 600000 a year for a couple of months' work is a hard thing to walk away from. No pun intended. <laughs> Trust me, it's a hard thing to walk away from. And I was, I was at my peak, so I would have been making a couple of million a year for six months' work, say. You know, before the fishery collapse, remember, I had halibut licenses, I had herring licenses, I had ground fish licenses, I had codfish licenses, capelin licenses, I had crab licenses, and they closed down the industry. I had 30,000 hooks, I had 120 gill nets, and one payment left on my boat, and the government pulled it all out from underneath us. Right now, standards, I'd be worried about four and a half million a year on that one. And then I came west and took over the diving industry for 14 years 
And then I had an accident and that one got pulled out from underneath me. And then I rebuilt myself and I'm back at it. And I'm actually got a company, my own company. And I don't talk about that for personal reasons, but I do have a company. Um, I, I'm just coming back into that world now, right? But that's how I'm doing things right now. So we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. I'll come in and catch the comments after when I get a couple of old dandelion root tea. Remember, folks, dandelion root tea, dandelion flowers, dandelion has... Any part of the dandelion has every nutrition and every mineral your body needs. You want to beat cancers. You want to beat the tumor. That's where you start. You get the GMO out of your diet. It has no nutrients, no minerals. There's links below to DCH, natural mineral. You don't need no prescription. It, there's no patent on it. There's no money in cures. They can't get a patent on it anyway. It's a natural mineral. You have to order it special from nutrition shops. Study below about that. Turmeric. You know, like all the exotic oils, coconut oils and seed oils, they are the best thing that you're per dollar, per value, you can ever buy is that type of oil. Never, ever buy any kind of cheap oil. Never, ever buy a Monsanto oil. Get it out. Whatever the thing you were using, throw it away and get something new. Don't have anything contaminated with GMO in your lifestyle. It stops you from uptaking nutrients. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Stacy Anderson, Aqua, Irina Rel Thomas, Diver Dude, Thuru. We'll catch all you folks. I'll read your comments after. <clears throat> and my voice is shot from recording day after day, all day long, trying to finish that video off. And it's just meant to make sure everybody has the ability and the opportunity to know the things that I know, that I know are really their, their treasures, right? So I'll do my best, no matter how good or bad it is, I'll be putting it out there, because the information is more important than my filmmaking skills, that's for sure. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Uh, I'm sorry. Monday, back Monday night, tomorrow night I'll still be going through all the editing to, to try to finish it off and render it overnight, probably get it up Monday, and I'll do the live stream anyway Monday. So we'll catch you folks Monday. Take care, folks. Let's see if I sign out on the first go.